athletes are such prideful people that you have to almost go and get them versus like waiting for them to come to you for support you know and in order for you to go get them one of the first things you have to do is let them know like hey i understand what you've been through and if you can't do that they're not going to open up to you and they're not going to be able to get the type of support they need what's happening beautiful people welcome back to the thrive after sports podcast what you're about to listen to is an episode of the unleash the gentleman podcast hosted by jacob jj emmanuel jacob is interviewing me on this episode it's funny because we started out the conversation thinking that we were going to talk about thrive after sports and uh, some of the challenges around athletes and life after sports and all this type of stuff. And I'd say that was maybe 15, 20% of our conversation. JJ is a new father, just like I am. At the time of this recording, my son is coming up on eight weeks. And Jacob has a, I believe a 10 month old or an 11 month old. So we're both new fathers. We spent a lot of time talking about that. I will have the link to JJ's show in the notes. The full title, the full title of his podcast is Unleash the Gentleman redefining masculinity so i have like a 50 50 split between men and women who listen to this show which i'm very grateful for but uh, this is one of those ones that i think even if you're a woman you appreciate this conversation and maybe this is one to just share and and listen to with your boyfriend or husband uh your father your brother you know especially if they are fathers or uh new fathers or thinking about having kids i think this is definitely one for them to listen to so anyway thanks for tuning in and uh enjoy this episode and let me know what you think hit me up all right i love you guys see you on the next episode peace all right welcome to the 11th episode of unleash the gentleman um today's guest is Taj Deshaun. So there's two guys here and no last names. Um, JJ Emanuel, Taj Deshaun. <laughs> um, Taj and I have spoken a little bit before this, and uh, it's very clear to me that he's an open guy, honest guy, open to his experience, open to sharing his experience. Taj was a high-level college football player, and as he was transitioning out of that, he found himself floundering, struggling with the experience. So he decided to do something about it. And and along the way, he decided to help others do something about it as well. So maybe you could just tell me about that, start by telling me. Yeah, JJ, uh, floundering is definitely a great word. Uh, before I get into that background, though, I just want to say thank you, man, for having me on this show. I really enjoyed that the conversation you and I had a, a few weeks ago uh, about what you're doing. Yeah, it was great. We talked about fatherhood. We talked about uh, just, you know, a lot of the things you're up to. So I, I'm really grateful for the work that you're doing in the world. Uh, I do want to apologize in advance to your listeners because I'm under the weather today. So my voice sounds crazy, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess floundering was a perfect word choice because I, I guess I didn't foresee what was actually going to happen when I finished playing. Like I was definitely scared of, all right, if you don't make it to the NFL, basically you have to go work an office job somewhere. And I knew that that terrified me and I didn't want to do that. But once it was upon me, I also didn't realize that, yeah, an office job is not just going to fall on your lap. Like you have to also go get a job. And I didn't know how to do that. So I, I basically was just drinking a lot, man, like trying to mask what I was going through, like the frustration, the confusion, and um and yes and i'm sure we'll get into it but eventually as i started to come out of that and establish myself in the working world eventually that's what led me to starting thrive after sports to help other athletes coming up behind me who i knew were going to be going through something similar so i'll, I'll just leave it there for now yeah so what 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 was the push though like there was that experience of okay maybe disappointment or like misalignment and then something held you forward be like okay i gotta do something about this I gotta do something different what, what was that push i was really just tired of being stagnant you know because the the drinking and the and the partying was really just a, a coping mechanism of course and just a way to like numb what i was going through so it was more of a temporary solution but the problem was after doing that for three months four months five months six months it's like my life is not progressing you know like i'm still waking up hung over in the the bedroom that i grew up in you know as a child uh, but now i'm a grown man like i'm 23 coming up on 24 years old at the time 
uh, a college grad, but no sort of job prospects or no sort of idea of where my life is going. So I, I really started to look at, well, okay, you can stay on this path and you know, you're destroying your health. You're out of shape now. And like, uh, you're really becoming a loser. Like you're on the path to be that guy who's like 40 years old at home, you know, playing video games uh, with no job prospects and like no career to speak of. So it was, you know, I remember walking to the bathroom mirror one morning and just looking at my reflection and like I had gained weight and obviously it was, I was hung over. So I was a mess. And I was like, bro, what are you doing right now? You know, this is not you. You don't have football anymore, but you can still achieve in some way, shape or form. So really, I just started to get my life together in terms of being more intentional about personal development, reading books, listening to podcasts, who I was reaching out to have conversations with, even though I didn't know where I was going. If you don't have, if you can't take clear action, just take some sort of positive action, right? Mm -hmm. Positive action is is better than no action. So anyway, that's what I started to do. Started to put the pieces together, uh, had a couple of jobs, which I can get into my whole career journey. But eventually it took me some time, you know, after I was in the working world to realize that I wanted to help other athletes. You know, I was five years into the working world at that time. So but yeah, man, it, it was just me being fed up is what was the catalyst. I wanted, I saw the path I was on and it didn't look too bright. And I decided to just cut it out. Just remind me when you said take positive action. Somebody once told me any job is a good job until you're not learning anything from it anymore. Mm -hmm. And is that like... Is that similar to how you define positive action? Like it's something that is generative, something that could create some sort of learning or what, how do you define that? Yeah. You know, I don't want to put everything through an athletic lens, but that's just the type of no, guy. Please, I am. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, to answer your question, yes, first and foremost. And what I meant by that was I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew like I had to start to do something that was positive. And I started looking at myself as like, okay, when you had football, you were very intentional about how you ate and you know how often you worked out and all those types of things. So you don't have football anymore, but if you want to move in a positive direction, why not be just as intentional about how you're approaching your day? Like I started treating myself like a creative player in a video game. Okay, right now you're just, you know, stuffing... <laughs> junk food and, and weed and alcohol down this creative player's throat like what do you expect to happen versus like if you cut all out cut out the bs and start like reading and start listening to podcasts and start um seeking out information and knowledge and start really be intentional about taking care of your health good things will happen even if you don't know where you're going quite yet at least you'll be going somewhere positive versus if you stay on this path you know yeah yeah it's actually funny you say that side point when i when i used to do in madden like 2004 i used to do creative player I always picked i would always make the guy the biggest offensive lineman he could be and then give him the 99 speed that was, that was my creative player every time so i did feed him the junk food but i also <laughs> gave him the 99 speed <laughs> that's hilarious that's a monster on the field right there man 99 <laughs> speed is what's the what was the maximum height you could do like six seven or six eight or something i, like I think that. i think it got to like seven feet and like 340 oh, yeah. pounds <laughs> that's amazing yeah i would yeah, love yeah. to see that creative play <laughs> every time that was my guy um but when you when you found those those more positive outlets like like the podcast the reading and that kind of stuff was there some kind of thought or process that stuck to you in the beginning specifically some 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 concept that made moving forward in a positive way in a constructive way more doable or more relatable to you in your experience man there were so many i think um so like one of the books i read for instance was the power of now or Eckhart Tolle or Tolle. I never, I still don't know how to say his name to this day, but um, that book, it just taught me to be more mindful and present, you know, cause I was dealing with so much negative self-talk at the time that to have someone explain to me throughout the course of an entire book, like you're, you don't have to believe everything you tell yourself or you are not your thoughts or, you know, the difference between yourself and your ego. So things like that were really helpful for me in terms of like observing my own mind. And then things that I was consuming were kind of giving me an idea of like the type of lifestyle that I wanted, right? Like I knew I wanted to help people and I knew I didn't want to sit in traffic 
and drive to an office for the rest of my life. Uh, you know, and some people need that. Some people need to be around a team. Like for me, I'm introverted. I like to do my work. I like to kind of be by myself. So things that I was learning about myself and about where I wanted to go slowly but surely started to allow me to create a picture for basically where I am today. You know, not that we're not always still working on what we want our lives to look like. It's always a work in progress. But like the way my life looks today started, you know, almost a decade ago when I was just trying to figure out how I was going to get my first job. You know, it came from the things that I was selecting to listen to, to read, just to allow into my mind and into my spirit. So cool. It's a, the, my main work in life right now for myself personally is just giving myself started with like compassion and kindness, like actually being kind to myself. So it's a crazy concept that I can be kind to everybody else, but I can't be kind to myself. I can't like what you you expect everything in the world from yourself, JJ. Like how could you give yourself any room to breathe or be imperfect or fall short in any way? And the more, the more I'm finding myself just knowing the language almost like, being exposed, exposing myself to language that is com kind, compassionate, that is caring, that is nurturing. I'm seeing growth in other areas of my life I didn't expect to see. Like being able to, to communicate with others in a more open way. Being able to regulate myself when i am had a long day and I'm putting my son to sleep and it's taking a while. Like these outward experiences also become like kinder, more compassionate, more patient, more nurturing. It's just so interesting when you dive in to taking care of yourself in one area, whatever that specific area is, it just creates, like you said, like, like starting that positive action, taking a positive step, taking a step that does something important for you. It just generates this like momentum that if you allow that to happen and you don't stand in your own way, so much can happen and and I, and I love that you end up you're now and you you've ended up in a place where you're like this is where I should be and why because I took my life seriously I cared about myself I took care of myself you know being kind to yourself I, I really like that you brought that up because I don't think that and I still struggle with this JJ like Definitely at that time that I was just describing, I don't think I was thinking how be kind to yourself. It was more so like that athlete driven mindset of like how much performance can you get out of yourself? Like you need to improve your performance. You're not performing well right now, Taj. You know, yeah. and to this day, I have I still because I was thinking about this while you were sharing, like I still have not mastered the art of being kind to myself. I think Neither a lot of <laughs> but I, but I'm glad you're bringing it up because it's it put it back on my radar to be like, hey, you know, it's not always just about like making sure you're performing well. Yeah, that's a part of it as a man, I guess we want to perform. Uh, but like being kind to yourself is, is something that's really important. I don't even know where I was going with that. I'm just glad you brought it up because that's something that I needed to hear today. You know, <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it's it's it's. it's yeah. It's so interesting because again, like you talking about that performance aspect and the expectations you have of yourself and the drive, the com the competitor. Like you're an athlete. I'm a guy who I was a, I played in my mom high school basketball team. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like the lowest level of basketball league that existed, but I was on the basketball team. Uh, <laughs> but but there but either way, there's that there's that there's that competition. There's that. There's a drive to be better. And then even through the lens of like, I'm challenging myself to be kinder. So there's a competition there. And I was like, hold on, who's going to win out? Is it going to be that angry, like bitter, competitive, that guy, that JJ, that's like contained and tense. And, or is it going to be the kind guy, the compassionate one, the, the one that allows in the doubts and the fears and all those things and like nurtures those things. And in fact, when I put those things up against each other, which one actually allows me to perform better over time? Over time, maybe in the short term, it's that guy who's like, get it done, JJ, like climb the mountain. You're almost at the top. Go, go, go. But over time, which is more sustainable, which feels like I could do this forever. 
Like, what's that space? For me, it's where I'm like, you're okay, JJ. You're okay. Like, you, <laughs> you used to be a baby. Your mom used to hold you. Like, there's nothing wrong with admitting that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's a that's a really good point you bring up. Even what you said just now about like you used to be a baby, right? One thing I've been trying to do is see myself. Like I imagine my parents, now that I have a son, you know, I, ma I imagine my parents looking at me as I'm looking at my son. I'm like, man, this is what it was like for them raising me. And if only I could have this level of compassion and love for myself at times, because you're absolutely right, man. Like to a certain extent, the whole like driver works like performance and making yourself perform works but like it can only take you so far or it can take you eventually it will lead you to burnout because that's like an insatiable desire to like always do more and achieve more and perform better and do this and do that versus like you've started tapping into that other voice it sounds like which is giving you a lot of peace in terms of how you go through your your days and ultimately go through your life yeah yeah totally totally that's so interesting when, when do you find do you find that you're looking at your son that way and having that experience often, or that's something that happens sometimes. And then other times you're looking for it. Like, how does that show up every single day, man? Like, I feel like you probably had this experience where I feel like I'm time traveling. It's weird because I'll look at him and I'll be like, I'm, it's just crazy to think about like my dad was looking at, you know, both my parents, but you know, my, my father was looking at me like this, the way I'm looking at my son and I'll be sitting or I'll be holding him or looking at him and I'll be like, you can literally, I have these moments where I'll see my entire, uh, like my entire future unfold before my eyes. Like I can just see him, like he's going to grow up and I'm going to be at his graduation. And then, you know, eventually I'm going to be out of here. You know, he's going to have his own kids and his own family. And like, it's, I see like the movie play out every, a lot of times when I'm looking at him, like, this is crazy, you know? <laughs> totally. Is this scary to you? No, I, I'm not afraid of death. Uh, I think the thing that scares me is sometimes I feel like I'm running out of time, but that just comes back to like the performance thing. Like, oh, you know, the clock's ticking. You're 32 now, Taj. Like to some people listening, like 32, what are you talking about? You're a baby, right? If someone's in their 60s or 70s, then that's that's nothing to them. But like, I think about like life goes by fast and I feel like I get scared that I'm running out of time to be able to accomplish all the things that I want to accomplish, but I'm not ultimately afraid of death. It's almost just like surreal to me sometimes when I, when I have those moments looking at my son, you know? So interesting that you say that. I was literally the last couple of weeks I've had, I'm not sure if I mentioned to you on the phone when we spoke that time, I had this weird, my, my son woke up one night, took him into my bed. He's on my arm. I looked down at him. He's 11 months old. I saw him as an old man in my arm. I was like, I literally just saw, you know, when you like daydream something so real, like your, your mind just, I don't know. I was in a daze also. It's three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> but I looked down at, at my son and he was an old man. Like he had, and, I, and, and it was that real same realization. It was like, what? I'm the father I'm effectively the father of an old man. Like life just, it just goes. And you, like, there is something that's playing out here. And, and I'm not even sure what that experience is. Like, I don't even know. It sounds like you've related to that experience already more than I have. Like, I'm not sure what to make of it exactly. You know, so first I didn't really, I didn't plan on getting emotional today, but like, I don't, you didn't tell me that because I would have remembered that. But the reason that makes me emotional, I think, is because like it's almost like this. Uh, it gives me a sense of peace, and this is kind of what what I was talking about earlier with death. Like like you said, like life just goes. You're looking at your son, like you're the father of who what will eventually be an old man, and so on and so forth. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you know, it brings such a sense of peace of like for all the like trying and going hard and like pushing myself and all that it's like really one of the best things you can do is just kind of surrender because it's happening like it's happening to us anyway and we have agency about how we experience it like it's, it's like a beautiful tragedy you know like i wish yeah. i had more time just to kind of be around but you don't you know it'll be over before you know it i remember did you ever have the experience of being a kid and you were in bed i remember this specifically because i was like eight or nine years old and i realized that i was gonna die 
and when I was just laying in bed and I started crying and it was so sad or like thinking about my parents are going to die eventually. And just as a kid, I, I would have these thoughts. Um, but I think it's only because I was thinking of death as suffering, like, oh, I'm just going to be locked in a dark room and I won't be able to hear or see or think or like, it's, you're not even going to be here. So you're not even going to know that you're dead. You know, <laughs> it's not like some suffering, like, <laughs> Anyway, man, we've gone on some tangents today, man. I'm sorry, JJ. I'm all. No, this is, what I, this yeah. is what I like. You caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> I literally almost started crying when you were talking about seeing your son as an old man. Like, this movie played in my head. That's such a beautiful thing. You know, this experience that we're a part of temporarily. Totally. totally. I, was, I was feeling the same. And then you started saying you're getting emotional. And then I started feeling, I was like, oh, shoot, I'm the host. <laughs> I got to keep it together. <laughs> Um, and there you go, coughing oh, again. <laughs> yeah, now I can't stop coughing. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm glad I, I was thinking about like being like, you know what, JJ, I'm not in the best shape today, man, but I'm glad I did it because this is the perfect conversation we're having right now, man. This is gold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you came on. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know, just along those lines, I just like taking it back to the kind of performance journey, the athletics. If you took yourself now with that experience and like kind of seeing, man, there's so much we talked about already. My mind is racing. <laughs> it's like we could do this for five hours. <laughs> um, if you took yourself now, knowing that experience of being a father, like knowing, knowing what you've learned about yourself in, in this process of, of, finding your your place and your space and and your relationship to if you took yourself with all that back to like 18 year old going into college to play sports what would your performance have looked like would it have changed would it have been would there have been a different experience absolutely man i think you know that the saying that says that uh youth is wasted on the young yes so <laughs> I, I would have had a much a much better experience because uh, as an 18 year old kid, I wasn't prepared for the reality of college athletics, you know? So going into it, I would have, like, I wasn't, I was used to being the man, you know, like I was the man in high school. So you get, you get to college and you're just another number, you know? Um, and that like jolted me a little bit and I was being treated like that. And then the coaches that I recruited me, you know, had, gone to different schools so like i was like with these new coaches who didn't even i didn't even know them or they didn't they didn't want me there they didn't recruit me you know so it created these bad dynamics and there were a lot of arguments but i think like yeah hindsight is 2020 of course but i would have i think it would have if i was able to have a conversation with that younger version of taj i would have definitely mentally prepared him for what he was about to get into i wish i had someone to talk to during that time who actually understood what it's like going you know just adapting as a young man because that's really like the first time that you start to try to find your place in the world is like when you go off to college especially if you're going somewhere far away you're trying to figure out who you are where do you fit in you know and then you throw like sports on top of that it's kind of like if you're not performing well then your identity is really in question you were definitely a different guy then same guy different different approach and you didn't have not only did not have the like inner support or like the internal process that could allow you to even find an identity outside of what you were doing at that moment, but you didn't have the network of people around you to do that either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that yeah. a problem in sports? Like it, 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 or that you've seen like in through organizations, colleges, universities, is that, is that an issue? I think it's getting better. Uh, I was in college from 2009 to 2013, so quite some time ago, over a decade ago. And mm -hmm. I think now the conversations around like athlete mental health and, you know, things like that are starting to open up, which is great in terms of having people who like basically someone who has gone through what you've gone through. You know, I know there are still plenty of athletes who don't have someone who they feel like they can confide in or like talk to right or 
even though they may people may be talking about mental health more, that doesn't necessarily mean that athletes feel comfortable. Um, you know, whether that's because of how you've been brought up, cultural things, or just like you don't want the word to get out that you're talking to a therapist or something, or you know, a mental health specialist. Like, uh, I think it's still stigmatized to the point where, uh, especially for men, right? I don't think female athletes have a problem talking about their mental health and things like that. But for guys, I think it's, I think we're a long ways off from having adequate resources in terms of like, hey, I know that I can. If I'm having a challenge with my mental health, I can go talk to someone without like being punished for it in some roundabout way or being scrutinized. So it's gotten better, but still definitely a long way to go, man. When I was in college, like there was nobody to talk to, you know, there was, if there were, nobody was putting them in front of us. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes you see, even up until now, when mental health awareness and sports, like you always see the advertisements, like NFL games, NHL games, like you always see things going on and yet there's still like that kind of tone of this guy's got something wrong with him like he's a cancer in the locker room or like there's and it's like maybe this guy's really struggling maybe this guy is like i don't know maybe he moved from somewhere far away maybe maybe his dad died maybe maybe his dog died maybe he was just born with something that is always been impossible for him to deal with he doesn't know how like there's just weird maybe that's the world maybe sports is 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 catching up to the world maybe the world's i don't know but it's it kind of always has irked me a little like is there something wrong with everybody who can't function within the team perfectly you know what i mean yeah i think i think it's it really does come down to not having people you can talk to who you it's not even about looking like you right you just want to talk to someone who gets it yeah like that's the biggest thing like even though like i was saying a moment ago the conversations are improving around providing mental mental health resources like um especially like at the professional level right if you think at the professional level hey we have some mental health resources to you that are that that we're providing for the team but you have to walk past the coach's office to like get those mental health resources you don't want to be caught dead going in to check in with the therapist because that could affect your contract or that could affect how you're perceived right is this person crazy is he stable is he going to be able to you know do what we need him to do for the team or is he going to have some sort of mental health crisis like um so there's that it's it's a stigma but it's also like if you can't athletes are such prideful people that you have to almost go and get them versus like waiting for them to come to you for support you know and in order for you to go get them one of the first things you have to do is let them know like hey i understand what you've been through and if you can't do that they're not going to open up to you and they're not going to be able to get the type of support they need that's why i'm so intentional about like i mean these days because i have a podcast and i've been doing this type of work for years and i have books and and things out there in the world where people do reach out to me for support now but every single day i'm still like hey let me go on linkedin right now and just try to find some former athletes and just spark up a conversation with them because i know that they're waiting for someone to reach out to them ask them how they're doing and let them know like hey i struggled too you know when i was transitioning out of my sport um check out some of my work this is what i've been doing i help athletes with this specific thing like if you ever need support you know touch base with me so it's it's very it's a very complex problem dealing with the very like niche group of people you know yeah yeah definitely what makes you want to like you mentioned before you want to help people what makes you like you could have just gone about your life just you know you figured it out you got your thing you moved on i'm sure that a lot of people have done that what made you feel like or makes you feel like you need to continue to give back and continue to interact in that way. Uh, it feels good, man. You know, selfishly, like selflessly, I, I genuinely do want to help. I understand how many athletes are going through this and um, how much I needed someone like myself in my corner when I was going through it. So that's like the selfless part. Of it. But selfishly, I really, truly do enjoy it. Like there's those are the best parts of my of my days or like when someone i worked with years ago reaches out to me and lets me know about like their most recent you know up life update like hey i just got married or hey you know i just um 
my business is growing like all these cool things that happen like it it feels good i think that's the part that gets overlooked a lot man like it feels good to help people you know not for, not for everyone i would imagine but like it feels good to to do something good for other people so yeah i don't think it's selfish i think it's i think it's i think i mean i get what you mean i get it's like a feeling for you but sometimes i think like there are there are so many ways that are kind of the they're always like the buzz topics and people help people in those ways like i volunteer for this and that like checks the box i'm a volunteer i'm good let's go i got my hours like that's i did what i was supposed to do and there's something great about that like there's a formula for what you're supposed to volunteer for how you're supposed to help other people blah 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 blah, blah. but if it doesn't feel right then I have this question in my mind and maybe just me being massive a-hole and just judging everybody. But, but anyways, I'll tell you what it is. It's like, are you really helping if you're not engaged in it? Like if it doesn't really touch you, are you really helping? Like, like where that's the, just the, the feeling I have forget about the judgment of other people. But sometimes I'm like, I see somebody doing something and I'm like, maybe I should do that. And then the second one, I'm like, maybe that's not the way that I'm good at helping. Like maybe I don't need to go there. Maybe I need to actually find the space where I'm best suited to help where it actually speaks to me as a person and that feels good. And then it's like the momentum again, it's like I'm actually doing something that matters to me so I can really pour myself into it. It's not a chore. It's really me engaging with other people and the connection is made there and it shines through because then then your story your best parts of your days are when people call you and they're like, I'm doing well. That doesn't sound so selfish to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you bring up an interesting point, JJ, in that you have to find, not you have to, you don't have to do anything, but I think it's beneficial for all of us at some point in our lives to be able to really ask that question of how can I best, like there are a million different ways to support causes or help people with things that you believe in, right? but how can you do it in a way that's true to you like for some people it feels good to just hey i'll write a check and send it over there cool i donated i did my part and some people do want to kind of get their hands dirty and do the work and like be in the trenches and whatever it looks like but wherever you if you as long as you feel connected to how you're making the impact like that's the most important thing and that's going to be different things to different people but i feel like the world will be a better place if more people were focused on like how can I impact my fellow man today? And it's great if you can also find a way to get compensated to do that too, right? Like, not that you should just be Mother Teresa and give all your time away uh, for free, but if you can find a healthy balance between like I'm working in or around or on causes that are important to me and, or, and helping people in a way that, you know, resonates with me and I'm also to like earn, also able to earn a living from that in some way shape or form i think that's a beautiful thing man you know yeah yeah so then tying the kind of two parts of the conversation we've had so far like the super personal like we almost both broke down kind of part like the, the second part what, what are there things that you've learned from this experience that apply to your life now as a father wow yeah now mind you i'm only great question by the way i'm only seven weeks into fatherhood you're a father <laughs> <laughs> and things that i've learned you mean things that i've learned from like the, the business of helping athletes or just like what i went through myself that helped me out as a father is that what you're asking either honestly I think both are viable experiences that you clearly have learned a lot from. I'm learning. I'll say this. I'm learning patience. It's almost like the opposite where fatherhood is teaching me how to be better in other areas. You know, so, and you know, this as a man, you start to think differently when your first child comes into the world. Like I, I look at life differently. Now my time is more, precious you know meetings that i would things that i would normally say yes to i don't say yes to as many things not because i don't care about the person or the people but it's like i have to prioritize my time in terms of what's going to allow me to be the best 
father and husband possible, not just like the best businessman. Yeah. So that changed. Um, he's definitely taught me patience because like sometimes, you know, baby's crying. There's just nothing you can do. Right. Or like I had some work I wanted to do right now, but um, my wife can't watch him because she needs to go do something. So look, I have to watch him. Like I wanted to do this thing, but I can't do it. So I just have to be with that. And let me, instead of like pouting about it or being upset, let me just enjoy this time that I have with my son right now and just be present with him. Maybe this is exactly what I need right now. Maybe instead of like keeping the pedal to the metal, I just need to unplug and have a moment to be present with my son. And that will give me everything I need to get back to work effectively when it's time to get back to work. So it's all, it's so connected, man. I'm, I'm learning so much in this. I can't believe it's only been seven weeks. I feel like I've been a father for years already. You know? <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's like, it's like, you don't know what life was like before it. it, which is crazy. Right. And it's been less than two months. It's hard to imagine like not having this little man here. So <clears throat> I, 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 it's so funny. Like I asked you the question, what have you learned until now that you can apply it to now? And your answer is, well, I learned a lot in this seven weeks <laughs> to apply to the rest of my life. And I know I, I, I totally relate to that. Like everything I, everything I'd say for myself, my, if you were to ask me 18, 19 years old, what am I trying to do in life? I would have no idea career wise. I would have no idea like what impact I want to make in the world. I can guarantee you I would have said, I want to be a good husband and a good father. And I wasn't married at the time. I didn't have a child, but I knew that was something that always mattered to me. So a lot of my life work from that age, maybe even before that until fatherhood was, I was focused on trying to do those things and trying to develop myself in a way that I could show up when that time comes. And yet I got to fatherhood and it was like train hit me. Like I have no idea what to do. I don't know who I am. I don't know how to react to this thing. I don't know what emotions are happening. I've never felt these things before. Maybe I'm like, I literally went through, I was like, do I even know how to love things? Like, <laughs> like looking at my baby, like I, I, I love this kid, but I'm like, is this love? Like what? I don't know. Like giving him a kiss. I'm like, should I? I don't Everything went through, like everything went through my head. And what I've learned from him is exactly like you said before, like having the kid look at me, what I'm learning, I shouldn't say learn, is like you, I can, again, going back to that kindness and compassion thing, but maybe even a step further is like, I can look at myself as great. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. He looks at me that way. Like he, my son wakes up in the morning, maybe my wife goes and gets him because I'm too lazy to get out of bed. <laughs> but he, he gets into the bed. My head's on the pillow. I'm like starting, I'm, I'm like opening my eye. And then I hear like, <sighs> and and he's like slapping me on the head, like ready to cuddle or ready to play. And, and he's just like, he's there. He's looking at me with like this, like awe in his eyes. And I'm like, me? What do you, like, what's so good about me? Like, I haven't even, I, you know what I mean? I haven't even showered yet. My breath smells so bad right now. What are you, what are you so excited about? And he's just got this, like, he's like, I know you're good, dad. Like, I know you're good. And I just have to listen to him. And I don't like that makes, you want to know, make me cry. That's right now. <laughs> that, yeah. that point, like just got to listen to my son. And it's not about listening. Of course I have to listen to what he wants. He, he's 11 months. So he's, his, his talking is like, Dada, mama, and like <laughs> that's the extent of it. But 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 listening to him, like listening to what he's showing me, he's communicating in almost ex almost exclusively at this point in like affect the way that his emotions are coming through. That that's it. And when he looks at me, it's like I can believe you. I'm allowed to believe you. I'm a great guy. What's wrong with that? And I never. Until I had a kid, I never, not once, I'm going to be 30 years old this year. I never believed that about myself, not until I had a child. I think that's a beautiful experience. I love that you're having that experience. I see glimpses of it now. You know, you being 11 months in, of course, you get to see that he's more developed. So I like how you talked about listening to him. You know, I try to do that, do that now, even at seven weeks. 
he's starting to make little sounds and stuff like that but it's yeah it, it gives you a different understanding of yourself like i can feel you can feel so accomplished just from like hey i i did this thing and you know i drove to the store and back and got my son this medicine and we walked around the store and i held him and he didn't cry and man mission accomplished that felt good like to just to run that quick errand and i i'm doing a good job of being a father like you said that is something that you get this new you get a new area to like be proud of yourself for or feel accomplished in that didn't exist before that is like it outweighs all the other areas yeah <laughs> that it's crazy it's a gift and you just helped me realize that right now i didn't realize that was that's why it feels so fulfilling it's like as long as this area is good, as long as he thinks I'm a good father, which doesn't require much maintenance right now, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just have to exist. So that's yeah. not a bad deal, you know. This is such a, a a good conversation that I didn't know I needed to have today, man. You know, I thought we were going to get on here and talk about my work with athletes and we touched on it a little bit, but it's not like we, you and I have been having a discussion. And since we have that fatherhood connection, new like newer fatherhood connection, it's opened up so many really beautiful things for me today, man. So really, really grateful for this right now. This is cool. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I am too. I, like, you know, it's, it's it's nice to talk about these things with other people, and not just not just think about them or like, you know, come <laughs> go to my wife and tell her I'm thinking all this stuff <laughs> for two hours. You know, she's trying to deal with the baby. I'm like, <laughs> she's like doing all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm such a good father. I'm, I'm, amazing. I'm amazing. Remember, remember, I'm amazing. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, yeah, you are, you are. Here's your lunch. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, man, that's like a movie scene right there. <laughs> I'm such a good father. I'm, I'm amazing. <laughs> yeah, to be a fly on the wall in our house. It, yeah. it, it'd be fun. That's good. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but I think and I think in reality, like what why it feels so good, why that outweighs everything, at least for me. I can't speak for you, but I'm I, I'm sure you can relate to this, is that that is you. Like there's nothing more connected to you than the experience you have besides for the experience you have with yourself, but then the experience you have with your child experience with your wife. That's a relationship. That's a, that's a constant work. It's, it's always going to be developing. That's the same is true with your children, but your children are inherently connected to you. They are, I had, um, Ryan Burkholder was another guest. I had a couple, a couple weeks ago, and I'm not sure if he said it on the podcast or when we were speaking offline, he said he was, he was expecting a child and he said, I can't wait for that experience because that kid is going to be of me. Like yeah. my wife is not of me. We're together and that's a beautiful thing, but that's a different relationship. This is like, this is of me and it's of her. And that brings us so much closer together because of both of us, we can both look at this kid and be like, this experience is, is us. This is us. And, and the more, grounded you become that experience and the more you believe in yourself in that experience and the more you feel good and empowered in there it's like well this is me like what could feel what could feel better than this there's nothing mm -hmm. there's nothing <clears throat> yeah it's surreal sometimes it's it's definitely surreal for me at times to be like yeah this is like half me and half my wife it's um like you you literally we have literally created a new family member you know, like a new relative. It's, it's just like, it's, yeah, I've never, cre you know, obviously, but I've never created a relative before from, <laughs> you know, from, from thin air seemingly like, here's this person who is like connected to us for life. And it's just so weird. It's not weird, but it's just so like, I keep coming back to the word surreal to see like both of your, uh, DNA combining to create this this creature that you just you know that you love so much this little human who <laughs> he could, like you said sometimes you look at and you see him as an old man like this <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. crazy man this is uh totally right. what a what a beautiful time for us to be to have connected <laughs> and to be having a conversation like this you know yeah. as new fathers yeah, yeah. I have one one more one more question I wanted to ask you to leave to leave you with because I think that you have 
you have a perspective that I don't think I've ever encountered. I told you this on the phone when we spoke. I'm not sure if I've ever encountered somebody who works specifically in your space. Um, and I ask, I ask this to everybody, but I really think your perspective is going to be quite different. What, what is, if, if you could leave us, like anybody who's listening or just me, um, with, with, something that you believe and help everybody to transition from stage to stage in life, athlete or not, what do you think that would be? I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite quotes. Well, I don't need the book to read the quote. I was going to reach for the book and read it verbatim, but it's actually, uh, it's a quote by Howard Thurman. And he says, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Uh, ask yourself what, let me start over. Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go and do that. Because what the world needs is more people who have come alive. Hmm. So, and I think that, that I share that because I live my life by that principle. I'm always checking in with myself of like, what am I actually doing? with my time? How am I spending my time? Is it in alignment with what I feel lights me up and brings me joy and ultimately is impacting others as well? Even if it's just my very nature of me doing something that, you know, has lit me up and that inspires others. So yeah, those would be my closing remarks, man. I love that. I love that. And to be honest, this conversation made me come alive. I was, I, 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 I didn't, I never really know what we're going to talk about in any podcast. I try to be as open as possible, mm -hmm. but I thought we'd be talking about a lot more like athlete experience and all that. <laughs> we barely, we did barely touch on that. And I, and I, I, I feel like that's because like we found a space again, like that new fatherhood and that connection that we have. I really appreciate this. I really appreciate you because you, 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 you bring me alive. It, 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 it's, it's exciting for me to speak with you. You're very open. You're very honest like i said in the beginning and and you're very thoughtful and i, and I really appreciate that about you well the feeling is mutual man uh right back at you this was uh, i thoroughly enjoyed this conversation there was i did not plan on you know you getting me emotional at one point just by describing a moment you had with your son but this was uh, <laughs> it's, it sounds so funny where you you make me feel alive too man you complete me bro but, <laughs> but you seriously like you i did come alive from this conversation in many different ways like i'm leaving this call today more present to like how fatherhood has actually shaped me in seven weeks in the way it's already dramatically impacted my life like i'm gonna move i'm gonna move differently throughout my day and you know the rest of my week and month and year because of and beyond because of this conversation so thank you jj we'll have to do this again sometime man i feel like we're we're just barely scratching the surface here yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this <laughs> yes indeed all right man pleasure speaking and yeah pick up taj's book too if you can we're, tell us where we can get that quickly oh yeah um you can just grab it off of amazon or you can go to my website tajdeshawn.com this book is even though it's written for athletes if you're in, in a place where you're starting to figure or trying to figure out what your next move is going to be career-wise or just life direction i'd say this book is for everybody it's written through an athletic lens i use a lot of athletic analogies and metaphors and stuff but um thrive after sports is you know it's available wherever wherever books are sold amazon barnes and noble all that type of stuff grab it from my website i'll send you a signed copy um, but yeah, man, and the podcast Thrive After Sports podcast is available everywhere. I say just visit tajdeshawn.com and that's the hub for everything that you need. Cool. All right. I'll for sure be picking up that book. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for having me, JJ. This was sure. fun, man. For sure. Take care. Let's talk again soon. Bye. All right. Bye.